please uh, give them a warm welcome uh, onto the stage. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, and uh, thanks very much to give us this opportunity to talk about the project that we are working at the moment. My name is Zore, as uh, you heard about that, and I'm a team lead for the Smart City project in DCU. And uh, for the last three and a half years, we have been working for this Smart City project. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, my name is Marcus Helfert. Um, so my background is kind of in the intersection between computing and business. So architecture fits very well into that. And that's where I coordinate um, a reasonably sized research group now at Dublin City University. Um, and also I'm teaching uh, in, in, in that area. So I hope we didn't raise too much expectation when I just look at the title of the, the presentation, Reference Methodology. But what we want to share is actually our experience and uh, uh, um, lessons learned around working in the space um, of uh, enterprise architecture and applying enterprise architecture concept to the smart city uh, space, where we both uh, lead a, a reasonable sized uh, research project. So the research project is uh, linked in a, in a research center in Ireland, Lero, the software, the Irish Software Research Center. And I have to say this is funded um, by Science Foundation Ireland. So I have my done my acknowledgement at that stage. So now we can get to the real topic. So what we will do for the presentation, we will both present. So Sori probably presents most of it because it's her uh, work and her room. But I add to it, uh, hopefully, with some valuable con uh, comments, additions around that. So but maybe, uh, sorry if you start with it. Yes, thank you. We are going to start with this uh, slide about uh, smart city. Uh, in smart cities, we are talking about different uh, smart things like smart buildings, smart economy, uh, smart health, uh, healthcare, and many other different things, smart grids. And when, again, when we are talking about smart cities, we are talking about connected systems because we need to provide new services to the citizens by connecting the uh, data coming from uh, different systems. And also, to make this uh, possible and to realize this, we need to share the databases between all of these uh, different uh, domain and services. And as you can see, we have the databases at the moment on cloud. We have many open databases available for the cities. And by putting all this information and data together, we can provide different services to the cities. And all of this will happen, all creating all this data are uh, created by IoT devices and sensors uh, installed in different spaces. And maybe Marcus can explain more about this. Yeah, so basically, so why is it actually so challenging? Because basically, so IoT devices are now around for a while, software systems anyway, and smart, smart buildings, they exist as well. So why is it actually difficult? Why does the smart cities actually have a challenge to bring all of these uh, different things uh, together? So to me, it's basically that a layer in the middle somewhere where we want to connect the different uh, domains. So basically, so traffic, energy, uh, also mobility, uh, um, uh, public services. So basically, in a smart city, what we're trying to do is actually using the data what we have and combining and sharing that across the domains. And that becomes really complex on the end. So basically, that diagram tries to show the interconnection between the different domains and the complexity of actually even just understanding that, not, uh, not even to manage that. So basically, without actually a thorough understanding, a deep understanding of the connections of the architecture behind that, it's not possible to actually combine all of these different devices, different domains uh, together. So for us, on the beginning, it was actually fundamental that we actually architect that kind of scenario uh, uh, around that because of the increased complexity, the, the different connection between the different uh, domains, the different use cases. Yes. And here in the left side, you can see some different services which can be provided by putting the data together from different domains. For example, for smart building, we can have some new services in terms of energy efficiency, and also we can use building information together with live data to 
promote energy saving behaviors and uh, also we can do something for security management. We can have building information and put together with live data, for example, about the sensors installed on the doors, windows, to let security people know that, for example, some areas are not safe. And we have other examples here, for example, for uh, smart energy, as you can see, and also uh, smart mobility. All of these services can come by putting all these different uh, data from different domains together. Yeah, and now one big difference as well from a technical oriented smart city is actually also that, that we actually fundamentally trying to improve lives and trying to be, uh, improve the, the quality of life, economic situation, innovation in cities. So everything what we do is somewhere linked to that overall goal to improve quality of life, economic situation, environment. So it's basically driven by that. So it's not just because we have the devices to actually uh, combine the data, it's actually with the goal of that um, um, improving life um, aim for smart cities. Yes, and here we have some more detailed use cases. Uh, one of the use cases is about uh, Dublin uh, Dockland Smart District, and here you can see uh, the district that they are trying to make this area as the smart area in Dublin, and they are doing uh, many different infrastructure to enable smartness in this area, and also something related to uh, mm, energy and, uh, uh, and energy aspects uh, in, in total. And also there will be a mm, hackathon event that they are trying to see how we can use data from different domains put together and to come up with some new services. The hackathon with, will be between 11 to 12 May and we are part of this hackathon as well. Yeah, and again, this uh, use case on the, the, the Dublin Docklands shows again the kind of the combination between different domains. So what they're trying to do is actually using data from a smart building to maybe do something on the traffic management, do something maybe on actually the economic situation, on innovation around it. So basically using data which they have from IoT devices in, very, in other domains and combining that and, and uh, managing that. Yes, and we have some other use cases here you can see, uh, because part of my research also, uh, also is about information management for building, how we can use this information to uh, provide new services in the area of energy management, security management. Uh, for last six months, I uh, was involved in this project. I got some fund from Science Foundation Ireland to think that how we can uh, extract this information from the new emergent uh, BIM technology and put together with, for example, with the data from IoT devices to come up with these new services for uh, smart buildings. Mm -hmm. and. And the challenge there is not to get the data directly out of the building information system. What they have, they have security data. It's also not necessarily just the understanding of the schemas of that building information uh, management system. It's actually when we talk with facility management, for example, in Dublin City University, it's actually bringing that security data, energy usage data of the building together maybe with some data they have about the student behavior, student um, uh, learning in there, and then basically providing some useful insights into actually the life and learning in students in that particular area of the university. So in that regard, the university and that smart building scenario, what Sore just mentioned, is kind of, we call that a mini city type of uh, environment where we have a big campus, we have buildings in there, some are, have more sensors, some have less, some have more, um, so we can combine that. So, but fundamentally, what we want to do is improve the learning experience from the students. So, and basically, what we did there, we started with what do we need to know to improve the learning experience from the students, and then connect that. So, that's one of the kind of scenarios, use cases, and connect that with the possibilities of uh, sensor information, information what we have in, in the buildings. And just even that example shows then that architecture is actually fundamental to that. So it's not just creating an API, it's not just understanding one database, it's actually understanding the technology layer, 
combining that with applications, so the information layer, and thinking about the services, what we actually can use. And now you are all in that kind of TOGAF enterprise architecture space, and I'm pretty sure that sounds very familiar to TOGAF, the, the three layers, and that's where we came from with these kind of use cases then. Uh, yeah. Yes, and we have some other use cases, for example, here, how we can use um, information and data from different domains together to come up with new services to the city. This is an example, for example, to prevent flood in the city. We can just get some information from weather prediction uh, databases, and also we can put, get some data from buildings about the underground capacities to store water, uh, for example, rainwater or all the water for the buildings. And then by putting together these things, we can uh, see that if there is any possibility to, to have a flood in the area. Also, it can be used for urban planning, for infrastructure planning, because based on the, um, uh, the capacity for underground water, we can just know that what are the required structure for this urban area, and we can use it for designing uh, the city infrastructure. Yes, and I think that's all, all the use cases. That's the three use cases, what you have, what we have here. So, but one I more. also, one more, yeah. okay, then I keep that sentence for yeah. <laughs> the next one, so, yeah. And uh, here it's about the football counter. We have been working with the Limerick City Council for uh, project for a smart city project and also at the moment we are involving in a bigger European project. Uh, the Marcus will talk about that later probably. And uh, for this one also we are using uh, this information about the uh, steps in an area in the city for example to plan for uh, further bus services for that specific area. We can use the collected data, but by the football counter service for many different reasons. So, and now these four use cases, they seem to be very similar in other cities, maybe they call it differently, so like innovation, innovation space, a new nice kind of smart area, uh, somewhere quality of like student life or quality of life, a football count of flood management, mobility. So many cities have embarked on similar projects where they use smart like IoT devices, information around that. And now when we look at these uh, four use cases, actually the combination of all of this, that's the interesting one. So how you can actually combine football counters, flood management, uh, also innovation center. So really bringing back to that first kind of slide what you had where you actually have different domains and the connection around that. And that's really difficult. That's challenging to understand even the data flows between all of these devices and, and between the different applications. And even when we think about, for example, um, uh, uh, GDPR data flows become really important. And if you have like actually the combination of the, all of these four or five or many use cases, I'm pretty sure without architecting, without describing that, it's challenging, probably impossible to actually maintain and manage all of this. So, and this is fundamentally the driver where we started to uh, work with Limerick City and County Council together, where you mentioned the football counter uh, example, where we started to zoom into one use case, one service, but not forgetting the rest, actually the rest of the city. And that's where we architect uh, that, uh, that uh, around. And uh, here you can see that we started to talk about the challenges for uh, smart city architecture. And the first and the most important thing is incorporation of the uh, strategies for the city into the architecture, the overall architecture for the city. And uh, the question was that, what can be this architecture like? And uh, here, Marcus will talk yeah. about the data. So the just, just if you go back just to yeah. that slide. So basically, so for us, it's really important <laughs> to connect all these different layers and not forgetting the vision or the strategy of the, the city. So actually, the, the, the vision, the aim, and the, 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 the strategy of the city is actually the driver why we actually architect it in a certain way. And that seems to be... Um, 
often forgotten when we talk about smart cities. It's often technical driven. Even in the city where we are, I would categorize that more like a kind of a, at least initially it was more in a, in a, in a technical way. Uh, it changed over time, but I think cities realize that actually that full picture is really important. So it's actually understanding the services, what we provide to the citizens and to the business, and how can we provide these services with application and technology to fulfill the strategic or the, the strategy uh, goal around that. So that diagram is really fundamental kind of our, our way, how we look at it, and it's very similar probably to, or it is similar to that kind of TOGAF enterprise architecture community, a layered approach with different views and combining that and keeping that coherent. And that's, what, to me, what enterprise architecture management is, to manage these kind of layers, the different views, and keeping it coherent to actually provide on the end the services the city needs. So, and uh, then we basically, like a couple of years ago, we started then uh, to look at uh, enterprise architecture, how that actually can help. And to me, and you are all familiar with the, 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 the uh, architecture development method the diagram at least, uh, so it, it fits very well into the TOGAF and the architectural development methodology way of thinking of basically having an, a, a vision and that comes from the strategy. So um, we have kind of a why or an aim uh, to do that that comes from the use cases. So it's very clear to us that basically we can't just architect the whole city and architect the whole information landscape, information systems. No, it needs to be use case driven. It needs to be clear benefits. It needs to be clear benefits to the to the citizens or the, 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 the uh, industry, the companies within that. Then also, to me, uh, because we're not talking just about a no small number of databases, small number of applications, <coughs> actually architecting data flows procedures, data management, standards, mapping between that, interfaces, becomes a central part what architecture actually describes. So that's actually the why, uh, the, the what, so how to describe the complexity around that. So these are architectural models. And then, and I, I think this is really important also in TOGAF, is actually the migration path and the implementation part in, into that. So basically, uh, if you have a uh, a to be architecture um, somewhere designed, uh, we need to think about adoption and behavioral change. So, and that's important, particularly when we're talking about socio technical systems, so tech systems with, with citizens involved, with humans involved. So, we need to think about how actually behavior can change, how people use information, how people uh, use or, or live in and, and, and work in that um, nice, smart way. So, how do they actually adopt uh, technology? So, and change management, migration is important and it's not just technical migration, it's actually migrating of the, the socio-technical um, system. So we're talking about physical, um, uh, cyber-physical social systems, so the social architecture, the, how people work and live together and how they actually, for example, commute uh, in, in the city, so mobility without behavioral change, this can't be actually all this kind of the smart way around that. Yes, thank you. And how we did develop such a methodology to do all of these things, to do the transformation, to do the implementation, and so far, um, uh, this is the story for our research. Uh, we started with this idea that uh, we need to design services with regard to other services in uh, the city, uh, which is coming, so, uh, we need some data from portfolio management in a city, which is talking about different projects and services. And also we need some inputs from strategies uh, from the city councils in smart cities. And by this we are going to design uh, services to think about uh, some context uh, requirements which are coming from the city context and also we need to design all the aspects to design a service. And uh, afterward, we are going to have an architecture. The next step would be the transformation or implementation of the new services in the city. And uh, here you can see this is the overall idea how we are going to do this type of transformation. As you can see, we have the green engine on top of this uh, 
cities in the portfolio, and we were thinking that what we should do is we are moving to change all of the services and make them up to date because based on the all these context things because based on the older requirements to, for service design and also providing the uh, alignment between the indeed the services and information layer this is the overall idea for the uh, this architecture Yes, and that's inspired by, for example, the uh, TOGAF architectural development method, the circular diagram, basically, uh, where we basically like adding services to the service portfolio over time and adjusting and enriching and, and expanding the architecture. And so basically, I have to be honest now, on the beginning when we wrote the research proposal to get the funding and all that, we talked about the reference architecture, which somewhere was then relatively clear that actually a reference architecture in the smart city space it's either too high level, not as useful as it could be, or it's too detailed and too far specific uh, use case in a specific city, which is also not so useful as a, as a reference architecture. So that was then also the shift around that actually kind of a methodology to manage and adding services to that architecture in a specific case. Yes, and uh, here we have uh, the initial version of the framework that we have designed. As you can see, we have the same layered structure for this framework. Uh, the new layers that we have added to the, the um, architecture are context layer and the service layer. In the context layer, we are going to talk about uh, stakeholders and uh, mainly citizens in smart city and also their concerns because the, the most goal, uh, the most important goal for smart cities is improving quality of life for citizens. And also we are talking about local goals for the cities and uh, different standards and principles which should be considered to develop services. Yes, and basically like there's a small thing on that diagram, that little circle on the right uh, corner, that's actually really important. That shows that kind of continuation, that adding services to it. So it's not a model which we develop in one big go, it's actually adding over time. So that's really important. So we wanted to make it bigger, but that would have kind of, uh, didn't fit into the diagram. But this is kind of, I just wanted to say it actually, this, this, little, di this little error is uh, important. And then I want to mention um, uh, three projects where PhD students currently work on. And I think this is really important to enrich and develop that a bit further. One is basically uh, uh, expanding and looking at the meta model, that's Archimate uh, modeling language, probably most many of you are familiar with that. So basically adding the, the certain components, certain concepts on it, where we basically uh, adding uh, um, uh, models to it. Just go back to the thing, yeah. you can. So the, uh, where, where we basically, and sorry, we'll explain it in a second. So basically keeping the, co the, the layers coherent. Two other projects, one looks specifically on data life cycles. So basically, like, to me, this, uh, an architecture is at that stage still very static, but actually the interesting one is actually how data is moving and how the data life cycle, particularly when we think about now GDPR, data life cycles become really important. So this is an essential component in there, which we don't see in the diagram really, data life cycles. And the third one is around risk. So. What is actually the risk about an architecture? If I basically, what, what can we assess that? So that's an interesting one, actually. So can we assess risk of an architecture? Can we look at an architecture, analyze that, and looking at uh, the potential implications in, if you implement that, in terms of risk? So this is kind of three, I think, exciting PhD projects where the students of us are uh, working on, so. Yeah. Yes. And as you can see here, uh, we have three main focus area. It's the context layer, service layer, and the relationship. And why this relationship and alignment is new? Because we have already created a new layer. The name is service layer. Because in smart cities, uh, we don't have that business layer, really. And we have services. And we, are, uh, we have also different businesses who are coming to get together to create a new service, for example, in mobility area. And uh, uh, I will explain a little more about the, the research uh, done during for this, all these three areas. 
And here you can see, as Marcus mentioned, we have done metamodeling for the created architecture. We have had some use cases. For example, the footfall counter is one of the use cases that we have had for the Limerick City Council. And we are trying to do simulation to show them the results, how effective can be use, use of this architecture. And I will explain about the simulation a little later. And uh, here I start with the context layer, which has been uh, my specific topic I've been working on. As you can see, we have developed a taxonomy of different components, and this taxonomy has been established on the three main uh, things, which is about stakeholders, quality factors in the smart city, and also uh, service design. And based on these three main topics, we have uh, just explored and extracted different things that which, which can be related to this area. For example, stakeholders uh, can be divided to three different uh, groups, citizens, uh, authorities, and also service developers. Each of these groups have their own concerns. For example, for citizens, uh, lower cost is, for the services is essential. For the authorities, realization of smartness is important. And for service developer, having more benefits and more market share is important. And also, um, we have also considered standards, principles, and different things that need to be considered to design the services. As an example, data principles, open data is an essential principle for smart cities. And we have tried, by this taxonomy, we try to connect and relate all of these things to different stage of the design, uh, design of services. Yes, and although this looks like a little bit academic, and it is academic, so we published this, but it also shown that actually when we talk to cities, it helps to start that conversation, what are the specifics about that city? What are the services, what are the stakeholders they are most worried about or concerned about? So what are, and it helps us to design and understand services. So that's kind of where that goes. So asking the right questions, basically. <coughs> And I just uh, want to refer to the city visions as an example. The city vision for Barcelona is talking about uh, some steps to come up the, for the services which should be designed. And for this, what they are saying is the main thing is talking about the vision for the city. What would be the vision? And based on this vision, they are going to uh, plan some strategy goals. And also they are going to just go uh, deep, deep into more details and referring to the goals for the local uh, uh, local goals for the cities. And based on that, they are going to define some programs. For example, for Bar Barcelona, based on the vision that they have defined, uh, they already have uh, 22 programs to realize the smart city. And totally, I want to say this context layer is completely re related to the um, a vision for the cities. And these are the components. We have another ongoing research and ongoing paper to write it down that this context layer is completely coming from the city vision. And we want to, by this, we want to provide a link between service development process and also with the city vision. Because the city visions are normally in very abstract level. We are trying to provide some type of link and bridge between city vision and also uh, service development industry. And uh, here you can see we have defined some uh, activities and pro process for uh, development of the, the context layer. This is the process and you can see all these components, stakeholders, concerns, and goals, and based on that defining um, uh, uh, related standards and principles should be considered to develop a service. The next one is related to uh, the service layer, and in service layer, we are going to define different things uh, related to a service. For example, function of the service, the medium that we are trying to provide this to the citizens and also the actors for the service and uh, the, the, the other resources that we need to provide this uh, service. And uh, the thing is that for this stage, we just dip into the 
service design science to come up with all these components for the service layer. And this is the process that we have defined for uh, service architecture. As, an, uh, as you can see here, the uh, context statement is an input to define and describe a service based on the strategies. And the outcome would be service description uh, by which we are going to see what are the services we need to have in the city. And also uh, here we have the relationship process. The relationship is new because we have the new service layer and we need to define the links between service layer and information layer. For example, we need to see what are the city services that we need to put together to come up with a new service for the city based on the defined strategies. And in this reason, it's important to define these relationships. And this is the process that we have defined already. And then we are going to uh, the step for assessing the created architecture. As I explained, we have been in contact with Limerick City Council. All these structured uh, architectural things uh, are a little um, academic and theoretical for them, but we need to convince them that this architecture is working for them. And by this, we have used uh, software to do the simulation, and uh, an initial version of the simulation that we have done is uh, here about the footfall counter. We just put all the components in the technology layer, information layer, uh, and service layer, also context layer. All of these data are real data coming from the, the Limerick city. And by this, we needed to know how it works for them. And for this purpose, we did some type of simulation. And as you can see, just we did a simple type of simulation by considering that, for example, if we have one data source, what's happening with uh, waiting in the queue to get access to the resource data sources, and what if we have number of data sources. And as you can see that, uh, for example, the uh, top right one, you can see that, for example, the delay would be zero when we have number of resources and we have some delays when then we have access to one of the data sources. We are doing more advanced uh, simulation. We are working on this and very close to the city um, exchange project that I ex explained before. We are trying to make it more practical from uh, city authorities' point of view. And uh, yeah, that's the summary. These are the lesson learned. Maybe Marcus would like to say something generally about what we got and what how yeah. we did. Yeah, and particularly we have we have still three minutes, I think. Yeah. So, um, uh, so basically, what you saw on the simulation, and I think this is really interesting when we're actually not looking at just the static architecture, we're looking at the behavior of an architecture. And I refer, though I mentioned that. that um, the, the data life cycles. So basically, when we think about that, basically like the different connections, what we mentioned on the beginning of the, the presentation, we can configure that in various ways. So we can basically configure different data life cycles. What is the impact? So you had one slide on with waiting time. What is the impact on waiting time? Or what is the impact of like actually information is not accessible at that time? So what is actually behavioral aspects uh, uh, around that? So how is it impacting, for example, information sharing? Or for uh, the footfall counter, one, one, one question was, so how many sensors should they have? How accurate should the sensors be? What is the frequency of updates? Don't know. And it depends on the architecture. All of these questions are actually architectural questions on the end. So how I connect all of this? Is it better to store on the edge in the device some data, pre-process it? Or is it better actually put it somewhere in a server and do something there? So that all depends. It depends on the, the aim what they want to have, also on the budget probably, but also on the aim. Um, so, and combining that into architecture. So, and that's, I think, is to me the, one of the best arguments why we need architecture. Because on the end, I can tailor actually a solution to a city with the context, and I can basically design an architecture which is suitable for that particular city. And that's why we got away from that reference architecture. So basically having a blueprint, this is kind of, maybe we have components which work, but we need to contextualize it. 
So we need to really understand the cities. We need to understand what they, what they want. And a final note is also we don't want to compete, and that will be far too much, compete with TOGAF. We using TOGAF. We basically, so in that process, what you outlined, we refer to TOGAF. We basically just add some specifics what we believe is important in a smart city context. That's what we're trying to do. So understanding, if you use TOGAF, that was our thing on the beginning, using TOGAF in smart cities, does it work or not? And what over this, that, that, that project, we learned what things, what we believe should be added or referred to. And of course, TOGAF is, there's, there's a lot, like what we refer to, to TOGAF, like we don't want to replicate, compete or anything, it's really we using TOGAF, that's like, uh, and I think that's the final statement in zero minutes, yeah. so I stop here. <laughs> yeah, thanks very much, thanks. just uh, for your information, this is the website that we have created and all the information about the research can be found in the link over there. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Please take a please take a seat. You've generated, uh, uh, I think, possibly a record number of questions, <laughs> <laughs> which may be good or, or may not. We may not get to all of them, but um, but I'll, I'll dive straight in. Your point about your point about TOGAF and uh, it's exactly what we uh, what we encourage is you adapt it for the way in which it's useful for you, and that's exactly what we. Uh, what, uh, what we hear time and time again, and that's the best way to use it. So moving right in, um, in terms of data management for smart cities, how do you handle interoperability and integration challenges from different information sources? Okay, I, I can take yeah, the first can. part on that. Mm -hmm. So maybe I refer to that, uh, the newest project, it's a, it's a European uh, lighthouse project, a city exchange project. So where Limerick is one of the lighthouse cities. And exactly that question comes up kind of, there are technology providers, they have different systems, different devices. And basically one of the technical challenges is actually to integrate them. So basically looking at standards, um, APIs around that. But even that is not so easy because certain APIs are already existing, certain I, uh, APIs are proprietary. So it's a really difficult area, but what we want to do there is at least understanding APIs, understanding the metadata, so building a kind of a repository around that, where we basically have then kind of data spaces, where we basically know where we can locate data, how to access data, mm -hmm. and the metadata around that access is, is very important. So I keep it a little bit short, otherwise it's yes, probably for, for a long time <laughs> around good. that. Yeah. <laughs> no, that, that. That's good, thank you. A uh, question on sustainability. Um, do you measure the full energy and carbon footprint environmental impact of smart cities, including IoT devices and infrastructure manufacturing? Maybe I can answer this yeah. uh, question. Uh, because we have been uh, three groups involved in this big smart city project, uh, this part for sustainability has been part of the University of Galway. Over there, they have been working for this, and also we have Manute University, uh, the people over there are working on the business model side of this project. And for us, it has been for architecture side. Right, okay. Mm -hmm. So someone so in, is measuring. Yes, yeah. yeah, so in Manouf, they have developed a dashboard um, on sustainability, environmental impact, and also referring to the City Exchange and Lighthouse project. So one of the aims there is actually no or low energy districts, actually positive energy districts, so they generate energy. And of course, one of the big things is actually measuring energy consumption, sustainability around that. Cool, okay. What are the cybersecurity challenges of integrating data from all the domains such as healthcare and building physical security? <laughs> I don't think I can give an answer to that. That's right. a lot. Um, a lot like of yeah, exactly. A lot of different sources coming. I, I, exactly. But also for us, it's basically not the, like that the, there are groups who look at um, uh, encryption, security challenges around that. And I mentioned one of the PhD students, she looks into a uh, risk of architecture. And when we started with this, there was also a discussion around should we look at security risk? We, uh, we uh, specifically excluded that for that part because there are research groups who look into that. Right. So uh, because it's such a wide and specified area on uh, security, I, 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 it's yeah. very important, but it's not the main focus of our work. Right, okay. Um, let's see. Uh, you mentioned um, 
uh, enter the enterprise continuum in the methodology approach. Have you applied any reference model or reference architecture for smart cities, or is that what you're essentially trying to create? Uh, indeed, this is what we are thinking, that uh, we cannot uh, restructure everything from scratch. We need to uh, bring existing uh, platform, existing framework and everything uh, into this domain and we need to, and that's the reason that we have started to see, for example, we have existing services, we need to bring them into this framework for smart city. And also from the other side, we are looking after the new services which are supposed to be created. But uh, we need to uh, put them this working and that's the main thing about the architecture continuum. Yes, and we don't start from zero basically, of course, for example, mm -hmm. you might know the Espresso project, which is a European or was a European project on uh, reference architecture and there's great work, work in that. So uh, uh, again, we don't want to replicate or compete with, uh, we, of course we're using uh, certain blueprints and, and recommend that as well. Uh, and that's also one of the things why we actually use Archimate as the modeling language. It's not only because it fits very well into the enterprise architecture uh, um, way of thinking, but it also gives us a way to actually compare and looking at blueprints and integrating blueprints into an overall architecture over that enterprise continuum. Great to hear. Good, thank you. Um, uh, there's a question here. Did you consider using the Open Group SOA governance framework for the service layer? <laughs> uh, indeed, we have had a look on all of different uh, existing knowledge and we are trying to use them. Uh, but at the same time, uh, we have had a more focus and started with the uh, context layer. We need to provide uh, these details to the service providers. It's not like that we are not, I mean, starting from service development. We are not talking about uh, starting from the service-oriented architecture. We are starting from one step back. This is from the city context. This is the effort that we have doing. Uh, we have the, the performing have been performing so far to say that strategies for the cities is important. And just one, I want to mention something based on we can see in the city vision that technology is not first. Now this is the strategies which are coming first, and then they are going to, for example to design to design new services, new infrastructure, and all of this. We are trying to take the concentration from the service and the technology side to the strategy and vision side for the cities. Right. Okay. There are about 10 more questions that we, we, uh, we won't have time for, so I'll, I'll, uh, I'll just pick one, and, and uh, please... Uh, uh, you might expect some questions over over lunch or whatever. I think pick an um, easy one. Yes, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll I'll pick one that that uh, that came in early, um, uh, and and that is uh, something we let's see. Um, yeah, how do you? What is your approach to devising your use cases? How do you decide which problems to uh, to tackle? Uh, indeed. Uh for example, for Limerick City Council, we have been in contact. We are just going straightly to their problem. What is their problem? In this case, it would be interesting if we have some result. In this reason, we are just pointing to their problems and trying to shape up a use case based on their main concerns. And also um, because, as we told, in the context layer, we have stakeholders and their concerns, and uh, we have already defined smart service is a service which can respond to some of the needs for the stakeholders. Mm -hmm. Therefore, we are defining the use cases based on this. Yes, and I, I would say that was an interesting question. Um, so basically, it fits because we, we are from the university, so we are, of course, interested in the academic uh, side of research. But also our research methodology, design science, is very suitable for exactly that. So basically working with, in that case, uh, cities together, identify their concrete problems and helping them with it. So I would say the use cases, what we're working on are 
actually from the practice, practice uh, driven, so from the cities driven, and we, uh, we accommodate that with our research site uh, uh, around that. Right, okay. And I, I will just sneak one more in because um, I'd be interested. Are you interested in following up with the open group on this adaption on what you're doing? Yes, After definitely. Yeah. Like, there's also a reason why we are here. Exactly. So basically, right. I think um, also um, uh, open group and, and TOGAF and that environment is a really kind of it, it's it's a, it, we, are, we are not there on the end yet. Basically, we can we, the discussion and that collaboration is fundamental to a, advance the enterprise architecture uh, work uh, around that. And one of the challenges what we have is really initially to explain why architecture enterprise architecture is so fundamental. Mm -hmm. Particular either to the more technical people, so basically, like they would like to go straight away into developing um, APIs and systems, mm -hmm. or on the other side, the more um, managerial uh, city manager to actually they would see it as kind of oh, there's another layer in the middle. So why do we need that? So we need to constantly articulate why enterprise architecture is important, and I think that would be something where we collect use cases. Uh, for example, talk of enterprise architecture in cities where it's really proven to work and where we can clear sh clearly show the benefits. Right. And I know the members of our Open Platform 3.0 forum where we have done our smart cities work will be uh, very interested in how you progress with that. And, uh, so, uh, Marcus, thank you very much. Thanks, Thanks very much.